Hello everyone, how are you? I'm Ari Thurger and today I'm going to answer a patron's question concerning a magic practice called Runar Fjolkingi. This question came from a patron who has apparently seen this term on the internet, on several groups and among certain organizations. So the patron was curious as to the veracity of this type of practice in historical terms. In fact, the question was, and I quote for you, was there an esoteric or magic practice called runa fjolkingi in elder folk traditions? Well, um, although I think I understand the esoteric and spiritual meaning behind the term runa fjolkingi, I'm not going to address this issue in those terms, in esoteric terms, and instead I'll answer this question in a purely academic way. Mind that I see nothing wrong in creating new spiritual paths and esoteric approaches. I see no problem whatsoever in new religious developments in order to help us evolve and be more immersed in the spiritual. The only problem is claiming that recent esoteric, spiritual and even religious developments, developments sorry, uh, to be a long-lasting ancient tradition when it's not. And right there, I have already answered the, the question. Runar Fjolkingi is not a type of magic that existed in the past, but it is instead a modern approach to the runes, perhaps less esoteric, and instead with a bigger focus on the mysticism that can be expanded through the use of runes. But before we really start this video, please allow me a couple of minutes to tell you something very quickly. Perhaps many of you may not be aware of this because, uh, well, it, it's indeed such a trivial thing with no importance whatsoever. But um, I take the opportunity to tell you that I am also doing this video because there's an ongoing conflict, several conflicts actually, in the online world <laughs> concerning heathen religious groups and organizations. I was unwillingly and for a very long time, actually unknowingly, brought into this petty squabbling. And it was through this idea of Runar Fjolkingi that I was actually aware that I had been inserted in these shadow conflicts without having the opportunity to say a word in my defense. So, this led, uh, several to, led to several assumptions about my own person, which I call them fan theories, uh, and, and there's so much nonsense about me in the internet that at this point um, it's even impossible or at least very hard to truly know who started this, although I know some of those people. Uh, some things are really hurtful, others are just ba so badly composed that you can see it's just BS, pure and simple, but some are quite elaborate actually, and those who don't know me will certainly be inclined to believe in such things. Suffice it to say that I have not, neither the time nor the patience for these online feuds. I'm here to share and exchange knowledge with all of you. I'm not here only to give information, of course. To me, it is also a personal development through the acquisition and the exchange of knowledge with all of you. I'm not here to babysit other people's children uh, who thrive on lying and gossiping about other, about other people's lives. Even though some lies about me are very hurtful and um, in the end of the day, at, at least to me, it doesn't really matter what people say about me, be that good or bad. I am the only person in the world who truly knows myself. And even I, I'm still trying to figure it out about my own person, as I am always in an evolutionary process as all of us. The more we learn, the more we know, and the things we once thought to be right or wrong may change in the course of time, of course. So let us give time and space for people to evolve. Let's give people the opportunity to be educated. Anyway, this is as far as I will go concerning this ongoing shadow war among heathen groups and the religious organizations in the online world and also uh, concerning my name brought into such pitiful disputes. I will not breathe further life into malicious lies. But since it was the idea of Runar Fjolkingi that brought me to the awareness of these 
conflicts and also these lies about my own person. I'll develop on this subject um, in this video today. So thank you for your time and your patience. And with no more delay, please, let's get started, my dear friends. Whoever came up with the term Runar Fjölkingi is probably referring to a specific type of magic concerning the use of the runes, obviously. And that alone is wrong in historical terms. Many people wrongly refer to Fjölkingi as a type of specific magic for, from Northern Europe, which is wrong, as you know it. Fjölkingi has been placed as a term in a list of various magical workings in Northern Europe, uh, like Seidr, Galdr, Gerningar, Fordadus Kapr, Trolls Kapr, and so on and so forth. And this is a mistake often made in neo-pagan groups and neo-pagan religious organizations based on certain aspects of Germanic traditional beliefs. As you know, Fjölkingi is not a type of magic, but a term that encompasses all magic, everything that concerns magical work. In the Old Norse literary sources, Fjölkingi is the most common and general word or term found to describe magic or sorcery in general. So all the other terms for specific magical works already enter in the term Fjölkingi. So there was no specific magical work named Runar Fjölkingi because runes automatically, um, when of course used for magical purposes, which is in fact something quite modern and not from the historical past, but let's say rune magic already belongs to Fjölkingi. That is, all right, all right, already belongs to magic and sorcery because that's the term used in Old Norse literature for magic in general without giving a specific purpose to it. Runar, on the other hand, doesn't exist in Old Norse per se. At the very least, it's runa in Gothic or rune in Old Norse before Latin influences. As far as I know, there is only one runestone, which is the Sparlosa runestone from around 800 of the Common Era, with the word runar which reads thus, thus as, I, as I will place on the screen, uh, meaning uh, and uh, interpret the runes of divine origin. That's what it means. The words runar, rigin kudu, also appears in the Havamal in the Poetic Edda practically 400 years later. Runar was mostly used during the 19th century, actually, 19th century, a Norwegian invention from the Old Norse element rune, secret, plus Har, uh, representing Her, army. It was a popular male name in Scandinavia uh, by that time, by the 19th century. It's important to understand that there's actually no evidences that the Elder Futhark was used for mystical purposes and most likely was only a writing system used for recording and writing as well. And in, concerning magic and the other food art, there's little or nothing at all <laughs> that has survived to modern times concerning that. In a later development in Scandinavia, the other food art became shortened and the younger food art was created, made up of developments of old symbols or old runic characters and new symbols as well. And indeed, the use of the Elder Futhark fell into, into disuse at least a hundred years before the development of the Younger Futhark in Scandinavia. The Younger Futhark began its development around the 7th century, but it was not fully formed until the 9th century. Even if the runes were being used for magical purposes during those times, there is no telling which runes were actually being used for magic and what were their purposes or their magical purposes. Um, I've already done several videos concerning the history of the runes, uh, their developments, and they're used to write magical intentions, talismans, spells, and charms, and I'll put all of those videos down below in the description of this video, don't worry. Suffice it to say that the runes were a writing system, that much we are certain of and magical incantations existed also. They have been created and they have been found in the archaeological context. But the runes were not being used to, let's say, charge the incantations or the objects with magic, but instead the runes were simply used to write 
the incantations, charms, magical formulas, uh, magical intentions, etc. And not to sort of imbue an item or utensil with magic. Not in the past, anyway. That's a modern idea, mostly developed uh, since the 80s of the 20th century. Nothing comes in the sources about runa, fjolkingi, specifically, whatsoever. The runes were used for a variety of purposes, of course. However, it doesn't say how or which runes that were used for what. Only in Skirnismal, it speaks of the thorn rune, Thurisas, as a specific rune that causes or used for harm. And in Egil Saga's Kalagrimsonar, it mentions the runes being used for healing as well as cursing. But it doesn't specifically say which runes. Again, I, <laughs> I must repeat something I, I said on other videos, which I think it's important to retain. In historical terms, and speaking of Old Norse language and, and the Old Norse and Icelandic sources, medieval sources, there are no texts that illustrate the magical value of each letter of the runic alphabets. And the few literary passages that seem to suggest the magical value of the runes, of the runic characters, such as the famous rune poems, are in reality very ambiguous and may well refer to magic formulas written by using runes as letters. Again, the runes were not understood to have a magical value in themselves, but instead were used as a written form to express a magical character. Used to write incantations, invocations, charms, etc. So even the famous rune poems do not necessarily demonstrate the magical value of each rune, but instead they demonstrate a um, connection with activities, functions, names, mythical creatures, gods and other entities, conceptions, a variety of things to facilitate remembering the linguistic and literary value of each character, runic character, and they equating with words to facilitate remembering through sound. And also, what seems to suggest the magical value of the runes in the rune poems and other texts, such as the ones uh, previously mentioned, it is indeed a magical understanding, but not the magical value of each rune or each runic character, but instead expressing magical formulas and the words present in them, and which rune used to write those magical formulas to demonstrate what is the rune equivalent to the main word of a purpose in a magical formula. So basically, rune poems were created to facilitate the teaching on how to write with runes, to teach their sound, written expression, and how to apply in written form and what they mean. The same way we associate the letters of of the Latin alphabet we use nowadays, most of us, um, and, and we associate to something when we are learning how to read and write, like the letter D. It is for duck, and now apply duck in a sentence. And F is for freaking awesome, I don't know. And apply that in a sentence as well. Of course, the rune poems are a more sophisticated way to teach how to read and write and associate each character, each letter value, to a variety of things to facilitate remembering and applying the runes as a written form and the form of expression of language. However, if we take into account that rune magic is something a lot more present in neo-pagan and modern heathen religious manifestations, rune magic in itself already enters in the category of magic as a general term for a practice, the practice of magic, and that alone is already part of Fjolkingi, precisely meaning magic or sorcery. It's clear that there were many uses for the runes in terms of having a written form of, a, of expression to write magical charms and incantations, such as uh, expressing apotropaic magic, which was more common, uh, which is a type of magic. But in the Old Norse literature, it had no specific name for this type of magic, apotropaic magic. 
There were several types of magic, but Fjolkingi seems to have been the general term applied to all magic as the action of doing magic regardless of function and purpose. As a term, which I have developed its meaning on, on other videos, but as a term that encompasses the knowledge of magic and not a specific type of magic, right? As a term for the acquisition of the knowledge of magic. So, indeed, uh, answering my patron's question, Runar Fjolkingi is not a magical art or esoteric practice that existed in the past, but instead a modern esoteric and uh, mystical approach to the runes. In modern heathen religious manifestations, Runar Fjolkingi is a type of rune magic, but claiming to be a practice of the historical past or even based on pre-Christian Scandinavian traditional folk magic isn't accurate. I believe that traditions and religions are, of course, meant to evolve and we are always meant to develop new ways to facilitate our contact with magic uh, and with the supernatural, with the spiritual, with life itself, especially for self-development to achieve quality of life and extend that quality of life to, to others. But it is necessary to differentiate what is historically accurate and what are modern developments, which by themselves become part of history, of course, eventually. But it's important to know the historical developments through time so it won't lead us into confusion, which in turn will prevent us from understanding and developing, well, everything that we want to understand and develop. <laughs> All right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje.